This is WZRD Chicago 88.3 FM. And we have with us live at WZRD, Joel Sisons and Shannon Hayden. They are musicians, jazz musicians, classical musicians, and we are very fortunate to have them uh, here with us at Wizard, and they will be having a show soon. But let's uh, talk about the let's talk about them first. Welcome. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Well, first of all, uh, Shannon, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your uh, uh, your start, uh, how how you became involved in music and uh, and the, the instrument uh, or instruments that you play. Yeah, um, when I was three, I saw for the first time on uh, TV a uh, performance by Bjork, and she was performing with Icelandic string octet, and that was my first time seeing a cello, and I was um, obsessed, and I She's the wanted best. To, I know <laughs> I wanted to I wanted to play that instrument, and uh, there's a lot of music in the household when I you know you know when I was growing up, so I was influenced by anything from um, 70s progressive rock uh, bands like yes to um, industrial music ministry skinny puppy to bach to Joni mitchell of course bjork and um so i grew up with a variety of influences and i started on cello um when i was seven and uh, i was very much a classical training and then i started playing guitar which was the other instrument i really wanted to play at 12 and playing guitar really opened my eyes to a whole other way to approach music and uh, I didn't just have to read the notes on the page I could write them myself I could produce I could record I could you know shred on guitar and rock bands if I wanted to or I could play Bach you know and so um yeah what I do now is merging those two worlds <laughs> so you uh, grew up on an organic farm so how did that uh, uh organic farm lifestyle um parlay itself into uh your your uh, music? Well, um, you know, it was, it was a beautiful upbringing. It was also um, quite isolated. So, I, you know, there's an um, emphasis on being self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. and, and can you tell us uh, about where about that farm was? Yeah, actually, I'm in my home state right now. So Southern Illinois mm -hmm. is where I grew up, four hours south of here. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, so a very self-sufficient way of living, very self-sufficient way of uh, approaching things in general. So what I do um, on stage, I think, reflects that. You know, I, I write everything myself. I perform everything myself. I um, mix everything even on stage myself. And, um, you know, I'm an only child. So that was kind of my, that was my string quartet to play with my loop machine and I, you know, that's what I wrote for. And, um, and yeah, I would say that's how it influenced what I do. Well, you must have had an uh, epiphany somehow uh, to uh, start uh, your your writing on your own. Uh, what was it that uh, made you made you feel that uh, you were capable and you wanted to write your own music? Um, well, I, I would say that was my um, world in uh, that was my experience in the world of rock. Um, you know, experience with the instrument of guitar. Um, just you know, learning to jam with people, learning to improvise, learning to um not be uh just a, you know a slave to the notes on the page you know mm -hmm. all, all the while I was still continuing my classical training through college um but I was definitely you know exploring a lot by playing in rock bands in middle school high school um learning to produce learning to do all that so that was just you know that was a given like you don't you know get involved with a rock band without improvising or um you know, writing your own music, uh, whereas many classical musicians will go their whole training without ever writing, you know, no, it's just how people, um, you know, it's what people are encouraged or not encouraged to do, that's all, mm. you know, but, uh, yeah. Uh, when, when you were um, uh, studying classical music, uh, how, how were you able to merge the two? Like uh, you, you have the you're you're uh, studying rock rock bands, enjoying the rock bands, but then you're uh, uh, gaining that foundation in classical music. Mm -hmm. How were you able to uh, merge the two? Um, well, I was seeing it done with um, with, you know, like artists like Bjork, and then also um, it's funny, it just came to mind the the band. Uh, yes, uh, 1970s mm -hmm. Prague band. I mean, they combined. They were all you know. Um, 
uh, classical musicians, I think, to begin with. I know Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, they were all classical musicians that decided, you know, they were going to also do rock albums, you know. Um, and so I think they're just, uh, by listening to older music um, with less boundaries uh, put upon them, um, I think I just, I didn't put those limitations on myself either. I was like, an instrument's an instrument. You can do whatever kind of music you want with it, you know. Um, but, you know, now now it's uh, it's a lot of um, specification, a lot of genres, very specific. And like, uh, you know, for me, I'm like, I just want to merge all my favorite influences. You know, I grew up listening to Heinrich Recchi, um, you know, Led Zeppelin, and there's really, for me, no reason why one should limit themselves to um, a certain genre. I think it's more important to just find your voice mm -hmm. uh, within all that. We're all influenced by all these different things. Yeah. It's great that you mentioned that because uh, that was my next question. How did you find your voice? Just by uh, having a lot of, uh, well, I didn't have tons of time, but I, I you know, was, like I say, I, I grew up on a on a farm and when I wasn't you know practicing four or five hours a day in my classical uh, uh work and I wasn't doing my studies I mean that was my entertainment was to sit there and um just play and experiment and improvise and uh learn um a lot about electronics and um you know I didn't play video games so I did that instead mm. you know I, I just wrote music and experimenting instead Joel Sizens, what about you? Uh, how, how you you were very young too. I you played started. video games. I <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was very young. Uh, well, this is really fun and interesting because, um, like Shannon and I have really sort of only known each other for maybe a year, um, and mostly just online, you know, kind of talking back and forth, um, and. Um, yeah, I'm just finding out more and more. There's so many uh, similarities like to to our backgrounds, and um, I mean, for one, Southern Illinois. I was born in Southern Illinois, and, um, um, but yeah, just also, um, you know, I think I think it says in my bio, you know, after my ear problems started uh, in 2006, you know, I was working as a professional drummer, um, you know, then I, I kind of discovered composing, but but really, you know, when I think back, uh, ever since I was a little kid, I was always dabbling and creating, writing little ideas on the piano, you know, taking my two cassette tape boom boxes and recording uh, on one of them, rewinding it, playing it and recording on the other one and like, you know, multi-tracking with two cassette boom boxes, right? And then eventually I got a four track cassette recorder and um, got more into that. and. Uh, so yeah, I was always creating my own little ideas, but then kind of my passion for for um, drumming and, and music and my, I think, talent for that sort of, you know, became the focus because that started giving me the opportunities right away, you know, and as a young, uh, you know, uh, young teenager, I was playing, you know, with uh, adults in their, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s uh, and rock and jazz fusion funk, you know, projects and all kinds of stuff and yeah literally listening to every imaginable style of music and then eventually playing every you know style of music as a professional drummer you know uh, and also percussionist so it was uh, percussion ensembles world percussion groups classical orchestras uh, jazz combos jazz big bands you know more free out avant-garde projects rock you know groups funk reggae hip-hop projects mm -hmm. You know, um, so I think, um, <clears throat> you know, little did I know that this was all sort of, you know, would eventually build to these severe ear problems, right? But then luckily, just because all that huge variety that I had done and sort of uh, this focus and rhythm and coordination and, you know, uh, when I got hit with these, uh, you know, with tinnitus, hyperacusis, um, and all of a sudden I had to stop all my, you know, drumming, all my teaching, everything, and like reassess, okay, what now? You know, I naturally went to writing, composing as a kind of a therapy for myself, right? Because I needed to just keep expressing myself, create, you know, creatively. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that started to slowly form into something. Uh, and then I eventually realized, okay, 
maybe I can do something with this, you know, and maybe I can actually, you know, make a detour. Um, and then I eventually realized, you know, uh, wait a minute, I, like this is more exciting and more interesting, you know, like instead of playing drums and other people's music, I, I can write my own and share it, you know. And then the last thing I'll say uh, uh, at this point is that uh, then I soon discovered, uh, you know, that it could be therapeutic for other people, you know. So I was like, okay, wow, like what was therapy for me? If I put it out there, you know, people can really get something out of this. And I really saw what a worthwhile, you know, yeah. How, how did you know that uh, it became a therapeutic for other people? Uh, yeah, I mean, when... Uh, when I released my first album, uh, which is called Relax Your Ears, um, also my my website, um, uh, I, uh, you know, and it, uh, kind of the idea is I'm carrying with me this message of, uh, you know, hearing conservation mm -hmm. and, and the message of my background, you know, with my ears and music and how this all happened. And, you know, um, so, um, uh, question one more time, sorry. Um, uh, how did you uh, know that? Uh, uh, oh, therapeutic. Yes. Was, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, well, yeah, initially, um, I started receiving emails mm -hmm. from people, you know, sort of all over the, the globe, you know, saying, uh, you know, thank you so much. I discovered your music and, you know, it helped me with this. And, you know, it's it's been, you know, so helpful. And, you know, it's been really inspiring. And I think, uh, you know, that was a cool thing, too, that uh, sort of from my story and music, you know, together, um, I think, uh, I mean, I, I found that, yeah, it's, it's been something that has also been inspiring to other people, which is great. And um, and then, you know, as my music started to get out there more and more, like more, you um, you know, yoga uh, teachers and people in meditation uh, and, uh, you know, people uh, in the kind of holistic wellness uh, worlds would, uh, you know, seek out my music and, and play it and buy it, and, you know, and support. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of different avenues I would find out. And, of course, in live performances, people would come up to me mm -hmm. and say, you know, just what an unexpected like, release you know, they had emotional release uh, that uh, they didn't realize how much they needed, you know, and uh, so, yeah, it's, just, it's amazing to be able to. Let's help our listeners uh, understand a little bit more about your uh, your concept of uh, hearing conservation. Uh, is that uh, is that uh, um, common or uh, uh, is, is are, you know, you, you're, you're trying to get the word out. Are there many people like you trying to get the word out about hearing conservation? Um, I mean, th there are. Um, yeah, it's it's not necessarily a common topic of uh, discussion, mm -hmm. although it should be in this noisy world, mm -hmm. <laughs> ever increasing, uh, increasing noisy world we're living in. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, when I, you know, developed uh, the tinnitus hyperacusis, um, I was doing some research uh and found the american tinnitus association some different organizations uh, you know funding research um, and uh you know then i uh, realized that there were some different support groups out there um and then found out that their the entire state of illinois didn't have one um so technically i created the first uh the support group in, in all of Illinois, mm -hmm. Chicago a Tinnitus Support Group. Um, that was uh, I think around 2007. Uh, I started that and uh, yeah, I started holding monthly meetings and uh, you know, we had a couple hundred members and um, uh, eventually one of my group members started a suburban group, I guess, uh, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, that was great. And um, you know, then after a while, you know, it kind of slowed down a little bit. People were, you know, feeling like they were getting what they needed out of it and, uh, you know, and kind of feeling like, uh, you know, it just started slowing down a little bit. I think people, you know, realized, you know, that uh, they maybe didn't, you know, need any more, you know, uh, uh, 
uh, you know, as much help, you know, and things. Mm -hmm. But now I feel like I want to kind of get back to it again and uh, do some more online, you mm -hmm. know, uh, work. But I mean, as far as hearing conservation in particular, uh, you know, I guess one of the main things is that uh, hearing loss is cumulative, you know, so you can be experiencing hearing loss little by little and have no idea that you are, you know, and it can be, you know, uh, getting substantially worse and it can eventually can turn into issues, you know, major issues. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, yeah, that's one of the main things I talk about with, with my students and, uh, you know, when I'm uh, giving a, you know, workshop or, or workshops where I'm a guest speaker, you know, at a university or college. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, sometimes also my performances. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What about your uh, fellow musicians? Uh, uh, do do any of them encounter that problem and then uh, come to you for advice or help? Yeah, I mean, the more you the more you talk about it, the more you realize you know how common you know mm -hmm. uh, different you know hearing disorders and hearing issues are. And the, yeah, a lot of people. Uh, a lot of times will keep it to themselves. So, um, but yeah, as people kind of hear more, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, I'm doing stuff with the group and, and what I'm doing, uh, you know, it kind of, yeah, invites them more to be a little more open about it. And yeah, yeah, I definitely receive a lot of emails and calls and things mm -hmm. uh, about it. And yeah, I definitely encourage uh, people to, yeah, talk more and be more aware and uh, share more, you know, because I mean, we're all, all deal with different health related things, you know, at some point in our lives. Um, so yeah, it's good to have a kind of a community in some sense, uh, you know, or at least some people closer to you where you can kind of share, you know, and, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, learn. Okay. When, um, uh, we'll get back to this, but uh, when you were young, uh, how how were you able to get your break into uh, playing with all these uh, uh, major groups and bands? Um, well, I, I mean, at the time I was in Springfield um, and uh, I just kind of started my own garage rock bands and stuff <laughs> and was playing out. And then, yeah, the people in the music scene heard me playing, you know. Oh. And then, uh, yeah, eventually I would just be asked, hey, will you <laughs> join my project or are you available for this gig? Mm -hmm. You know? Um, and, uh, yeah, so I was, uh, you know, junior high and high school, mm -hmm. yeah, playing, you know, a lot. And then, uh, yeah, that helped me to decide that I was going to go to college, you know, for, for music. And, mm -hmm. um, so in other words, uh, very hard work. You were uh, trying to play as much as you can. You were everywhere, and then people noticed. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was everywhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, let's uh, get back to um, uh, when uh, you you know you you had the hearing problem, and then you started composing, and then um, you uh, use space, and uh, um, and uh, you, you know you. Um, incorporated space into your music and uh, uh, tell us a little bit about that yeah uh, yeah and I think and I think we both do that a lot you know um, mm -hmm. um, I mean there's lots of ways I could talk about it uh, I mean one you know related to to drums is that you know uh, I always played I think really tastefully as a drummer you know and like a lot of particularly like like vocalists and jazz vocalists would hire me because, you know, I didn't overplay, I served the music. Uh, and yeah, I was uh, aware that, uh, you know, that what I chose to not play was just as important, if not even more important than what I chose to play. Mm -hmm. um, and so that all came from kind of drums and percussion and just being aware of um, all time and space. Mm -hmm. um, and, did you uh, get that from your uh, your teachers, or did you realize that on your own? Um, it's a good question. I mean, I I think I I realized that through just having you know like big ears and listening and absorbing a lot of music, you know, and like like with Shannon, like you know when I heard Bjork, you know, Icelandic composer, um, 
and vocalist, uh, you know, just like, wow, you know, and so many, you know, other styles of, of uh, music. Uh, you know, I was always more attracted to music that, um, yeah, kind of like, like um, breathed, you know, and, and uh, yeah, it was very, thoughtful, thoughtfully orchestrated, layered. Um, and uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think it's just something that, uh, you know, that kind of music evoked more out of me and I connected more with it. And so I think it, uh, yeah, influenced me more. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's plenty of, plenty of ways and angles I could sort of analyze it and talk about it, but. Okay. And uh, your uh, latest album is Resonance, and it seems as if uh, resonance uh, depends a lot uh, on space and on solid. So how how did you uh, put that together? Uh, <laughs> how did I put the album together? Uh, well, your inspiration for writing okay. uh, writing yeah. it the way you did. Uh, yeah, it, it deals with a lot. Uh, again, there's so many different uh, aspects of it I could uh, talk about, but uh, one, uh, you know, that uh, could be interesting and relates to, uh, you know, nearby where we are uh, and uh, physical spaces uh, is the Chicago Botanic Gardens. Um, and that uh, is a place that, uh, you know, just whatever kind of the noise and chaos of the city would uh, kind of just be too much, you know, build up for me, uh, you know, uh, connecting with, you know, you know, nature and just getting away from the city, you know, something's always been important to me. So whether I would go to the Morton Arboretum or Garfield Conservatory or Lincoln Park Conservatory or Chicago Botanic Gardens, you know, or out by the lake um, or any number of other amazing, you know, parks in Chicago, that's one great thing about the city, right? We have so many green spaces. Um, yeah, those will always be places uh, where I would uh, de-stress, you know, de-noise and, and, and draw and, you know, kind of more uh, energy back into myself, you know, and, and appreciate the openness and the, you know, uh, being away from the clutter, right? Mm -hmm. um, so because of that, yeah, that became very important and uh, naturally inspired me to write. So yeah, there's a six pieces on the album that I kind of called the garden suite mm -hmm. um, unofficially, uh, but uh, they're towards the last half of the album. Um, and yeah, they're all pieces I wrote for the different gardens at the Botanic Gardens. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've performed there, you know, many times. And yeah, it's a great, great place. When you composed these uh, pieces, were you at these gardens when you composed them? Sometimes, yeah. I mean, I'm sure, you know, it's probably similar with Shannon. Um, you know, I I write in so many different ways. Um, like, yeah, there are moments when I'm at a place and I, you know, get some kind of inspiration and a, a melody or thought, you know, or a poem or something, you know, comes to me and uh, I'll sing it or record it or say it into my phone, you know, the voice memos. Um, or I'll have an experience somewhere and then I come home and then all of a sudden like I get this like, you know, just hit of, uh, I don't know how to-, to, to Inspiration? To, yeah, where it's just like, oh my gosh, I just had to, to get this out of me, you know, and, and it's a, mm -hmm. but it's a, it's a good thing, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And, and so I sit down at an instrument, you know, and, and like, like there's a, a piece on the album, um, uh, two pieces for the Japanese garden, Bariji and Niwa, um, and uh, Niwa in particular, the guitar piece, um, you know, like I wrote the whole piece in like five minutes and, you know, it just all came out on, on the guitar um, and, you know, I was like, wow, you know, like, did that just happen? And, and there's times like that where it's like, Wait a minute! Did that already exist, or did I, did I, you know, write that? How how did that happen? You know, because mm -hmm. just you get get this inspiration that happens so fast. Um, it's almost like um, 
like if there's like a dinosaur fossil under the soil, you know, and you're mm -hmm. like just like uncovering it, it's almost like it already existed, mm -hmm. uh, you know, somewhere in the ether, right? But you you found it or you put it together or like the, there are times like I feel like I wrote this in the past life, maybe, you know, now I'm discovering mm -hmm. it again, you know, it's like kinds of interesting things. Uh, and then also there'll be times when you'll, you know, be working on a song or idea or piece for months and months and months or even years, mm -hmm. you know. <clears throat> So, uh, yeah, that varies drastically. I'm sure it probably mm -hmm. does. For, yeah. yeah. Well, Shannon, what about you? Uh, when you uh, when you write, uh, uh, you know, Joel mentioned that uh, uh, the gardens and the spaces uh, mm -hmm. inspired him. Uh, what uh, inspires you? Well, it's a, you know, a variety of things, but I would say that walking actually is a great um, time for me to, you know, just like... Um, melodies will come to mind, ideas will come to mind, and thank God for voice memos, because you can mm -hmm. actually write that thing down, notes, you know, mm -hmm. um, write down ideas, and then, but oftentimes, although I, um, I absolutely, actually, it's been kind of a, I've been not in a city the last couple of weeks, and it has been a little bit of an adjustment to be here, and hearing the noise all the time, anytime mm -hmm. you walk outside, um, but uh, I, I enjoy my peace and quiet, but also I do enjoy um, certain things like, for example, gongs, you know, when you hear all the frequencies and I just love hearing that because all of a sudden it's amazing how your brain will try to organize the chaos. Mm -hmm. And I hear all kinds of melodies and ideas through that. And I oftentimes um, I love sounds and textures. Mm -hmm. So, and I can create a lot of different types of textures with, especially with my electric setup and my electric cello. And so sometimes I will just start by, creating a soundscape or different like cool sounds or things that I think you know sound interesting and then from there a melody will you know come forth uh sometimes um but also uh I've noticed uh motorcycle and car motors also they, mm -hmm. they will inspire melodies sometimes mm -hmm. when I listen for a long period of time <laughs> and uh but yeah you know it's um it's a bit like my college art professor once said um you, you know he we have all these perfectly white sheets of paper in front of us and he was trying to get us to do something I don't remember and uh he was like you all are intimidated by that perfectly white piece of paper go outside put it on the ground stomp on it smear it with mud whatever you need to do bring it back in then create your masterpiece for the day or something you know and I was kind of like oh yeah we are sometimes intimidated by sometimes you know like just the pure especially in the studio just like pure and utter silence you know mm -hmm. it's a little bit unnatural compared to our everyday lives sometimes Sometimes a lot will come from that too, but um, but oftentimes that's that's how I like to to play. You know, when the orchestra is tuning up at the beginning of the performance, I hear mm -hmm. all kinds of melodies in that. Oftentimes, you know, mm -hmm. so Interesting. yeah. <laughs> so the two of you, um, do you find that uh, when you're creating, uh, is it does it seem like you're modifying the silence? Modifying the what? The silence. The silence. <laughs> Oh, I like that idea. What do you think? Modifying the uh, modifying the silence. Yes, <clears throat> you're at the space that you spoke about. Uh, yeah. It... <clears throat> um, yeah, that's an interesting way to um, think about it. Um, yeah, uh, along with that, you know, I think. Um, with the idea of resonance too, the name of my newer album. Um, <clears throat> even you know, even when there's silence, uh, there's still uh, you know, like a interaction of uh, like you know different waves, right? And electrical currents and uh, different frequencies. You know, whether that's you know human-made stuff everywhere, right? Or, or whether that's uh, energy from nature and life and, you know, plants and soil and other people. And, uh, uh, and I think um, when we, uh, you know, talk with each other, meet each other, pass by each other, uh, you know, when we're in nature, when we're in the city, all these different interactions, um, I think we're changing each other's uh, you know, sort of frequencies, right? And changing each other's energy. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that's kind of an interesting way I look look at that kind of aspect, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, I think um, when we play, and I, I feel this when I when I play, I, it's actually kind of a wild disruption of the silence. It's like, mm -hmm. no, you you spent time in silence, and now you have something to say. Or you spent time in silence, and now you're ready to listen to something. It's mm -hmm. kind of like um, spending time in retreat, you're spending time in the countryside. When you go to the city, you're ready for culture, you're ready for an experience. And then in order for that experience to really be special and for you to not be numb to that experience, now you need to go back and have your quiet retreat, you know? Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, that's what I would say more. And, and that, and giving space within music as well will give you a moment of that to re reflect on what you just experienced too, mm -hmm. which was not quiet and was not silent, you know, but it gives you a moment to reflect, you know, which I think is important. I think nowadays, you know, anywhere you go, you just hear a constant din of music that, it's just like anonymous to us. We don't know who's singing. We don't care. We don't whatever. You know, it's just constantly in the background. And I think it actually diminishes our value of music. You know, I think there should be silence, and it should be, we should go back to jukeboxes. And when you want to play your favorite song or you want to hear an awesome new song, you go play it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, you uh, you have your uh, electric uh, cello too, uh, Shannon. So uh, did you have to modify that for your sound? Wildly, yeah. I've been studying how to amplify um, the cello since I was about 15 years old mm -hmm. and uh, have gone through all the different, um, well, not all the different, a few different pickup systems over the years, just always trying to find who's, you know, done the best at that. Um, it's interesting playing guitar. It's like you can even walk into a guitar center and just see such a wide range of just like, these are gonna, these instruments are generally gonna sound pretty darn good. You know, they've, you know, electric guitars have had, uh, many, many, many years worth of um, experience uh, ahead of electric cello. Although there were electric cellos 100 years ago, it's just no one was, you know, you know, demanding that it sound better and better and better like they were with guitar. So I feel like it's been a, um, a lifelong, uh, at least half my life, um, research uh, on how to, you know, at once get the the perfect sound of my 1890s instrument with the electric cello when I want it, mm -hmm. and then be able to also play something that's very unchillistic sounding, you mm -hmm. know, within moments of each other. Mm -hmm. And what I ended up doing was I actually used impulse response, uh, um, you know, device that I've sampled my 1890s instrument onto, and anytime I play my electric cello, it's essentially kind of triggering that, a recording of the 1890s cello. So, um, yeah, it's taken many, 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 many many years worth of research and also reliance on technology to get better and better. Mm -hmm. What are uh, two songs that represent what you just told me? And uh, maybe later you could send us the, the links to that those yeah. songs though, so that we could include it in the description for our listeners. Perfect. Um, I would say uh, one would be my latest single, Paper Lanterns, which is um, it's available on all the streaming um, sites right now. And there's a lot of unchillistic sounds in there. I'm um, making a percussive instrument of the cello. I'm making a, um, it sounds kind of like a, a Chinese violin sound with it. Mm -hmm. I'm using distortion on it. And then I'm just using a straight cello sound. There's all kinds of layers and sounds and textures you can get from that one instrument. And then I would say that um, another piece that demonstrates more purely, a, you know, acoustic cello sound with the electric is my, um, is well actually uh you know, also I'll, I'll, and, and a few other um pieces on the new album but they're not released yet but my song bake sale for the insurrection would be um uh you know just sort of an example of a more layered orchestrated um more pure chillistic tones um so yeah you can hear all the the different sounds you can get with that one instrument mm. that's a very interesting uh title yeah, with the children with the bake sale and then uh or maybe it was it's an adult bake sale but still it's a very nice title yeah thank you that's my dad he came up with that title and he helps me with a lot of you know putting together the context the lyrics the the whole you know package you know he was um always playing amazing music in the house he had a great album collection 
uh, when I was growing up and he's, you know, still to this day, he's like sending little ideas like, oh, check this out from some obscure 1978 album or something, you know, or, oh, this kind of reminds me of this uh, song that you're working on right now. Maybe check out the production on this song, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, it is cool because I, I do, you know, everything else myself. And it's so important to have another set of ears listening and, and also helping tie up something that, um, Sometimes as the artist, you get too deep into, you get into the weeds, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, to have someone be like, I see the big picture here, you know, mm -hmm. this would be, um, yeah, so I'm very grateful. Mm -hmm. right. But yeah, Big Self Against Direction is 100% his idea for me. <laughs> So your uh, your father is not a musician, but he is a music connoisseur. Yes, yeah, very much so. Yeah, absolutely. So how did uh, you, Joe, and you, Shannon, uh, find the common ground to uh, come together and work together, and uh, how did you meet? Mm -hmm. um, I think I think a, a mutual uh, friend, um, musician friend, I think, um, mentioned uh, about her to me, uh, Anastasia uh, Royal. Um, uh, she's up, up north uh, a little ways. Um, uh, I think she has a... Uh, uh, Piano album coming out in the near future as well. Yeah, um, it this week. Oh, awesome. Okay. So, uh, yeah, uh, I think I just connected with Shannon online after yeah, Anastasia mentioned uh, about her. And then, uh, I mean, maybe we spent the last couple of years just randomly, you know, sending, you know, little messages or liking each other's, thing, you know, posts or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, yeah, just little by little, we started talking, you know, more about, uh, yeah, our projects and music. And then I think, um, I don't know exactly how. Uh, Schedule started working out. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think maybe, oh, I think she was, uh, I saw she was going to be in Chicago, mm -hmm. you know. So I said, you know, hey, let's meet up and talk about, you know, maybe collaborating. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, we've been talking about uh, all this use of, space and our music and we happen to be playing at space <laughs> in Evanston, <laughs> Evanston space. <clears throat> um, and uh, yeah, we just saw, uh, you know, that we thought our music would work nicely uh, together, um, uh, you know, for performance to, you know, <laughs> and uh, you know, yeah, we, we both have these similar, very eclectic, you know, uh, backgrounds and all kinds of styles. And I think we uh, draw upon all those, uh, but kind of like, you know, sort of go about it in a slightly different way. But uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think it's cool and interesting. And I think it will be, in, you know, our, our music, I think, will complement, uh, you know, each other. Uh, and uh, we'll yeah, really make for a nice evening of, of music. Mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> Do you have an album together? Not yet. No, we don't. No. <laughs> okay. No. Well, maybe uh, uh, more to come. More to come. Yeah. Man. yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, how long did it, uh, did it take for you to uh, put this show together and, uh, and get it ready to uh, uh, pitch to, uh, to, uh, to space? Oh, good. I, I thought he. I thought he was getting ready to <laughs> tell the whole tale. <laughs> um, well, I think we had been we have been discussing uh, doing a show together since uh, maybe the winter, I believe, and we we're just trying to figure out you know a space that would, um, you know, be uh, a great you know, experience for people um to to listen to the music and that would fit the vibe, and um. And I know that Joel, um, you know, I've played the space a few times and I know Joel has, and I, I have very fond memories of playing there. It's a beautiful sound. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually had uh, a fun, probably um, one of my most uh, sketchy show stories from the space, actually, I was at that time, it was a few years ago and I was using, was quite a few years ago, and I was using Ableton for my live performance. And um, I was highly reliant on my 2000 um, 
maybe 13 uh, laptop for this whole thing. And it decided to crash during the sound check for my um, space show. Mm -hmm. And um, there's an amazing, okay, so I'll oh, we'll get there actually. And uh, I panicked and uh, I just went to the closest guitar store, which was down the street. And I need to visit them again because they totally saved me. It was, it was a pretty big show. And um, and I just got, you know, a few boss pedals and I strung them together without even checking them before the performance. And it actually ended up being one of the most exciting performances I've, I've done for a numerous, you know, numerous reasons. But I remember um, that performance fondly and I remember, you know, getting really nice reviews from that performance. I was kind of like, oh, I think space had something for me to learn that mm -hmm. night you know they invited the space for me to 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 be vulnerable a little bit with the audience and mm -hmm. uh to try out some new things and um but yeah i just have very fond recollections of playing there yeah. Yeah. yeah i mean we were looking for a, a nice venue uh you know with high high fidelity sound you know a nice lighting and just would be a nice uh experience uh um yeah, sonically and visually with, you know, what we wanted to present. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's one of the nicer venues in the area. Yeah. What, do you know if it's uh, going to be recorded? Yes. Uh, okay. Yes. If you can, please, uh, after it's been recorded, please send it to us and then we'll include it in the description for this interview as well. Okay. Perfect. And uh, what about you, Shannon? That uh, uh, that uh, concert that you had with the three box pedals. Uh, yeah. Is there a recording of that one too? I don't think so. No, oh. sadly. Oh. <laughs> and maybe that's best because I think it went over really well, and I'd like to just remember that it went over really well instead of listening to the recording. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but no, no, no recording in that one. So okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, um, <clears throat> yeah, the show is uh. Uh, August fourth, the August Sunday, mm -hmm. the Sunday. Um, uh, yeah, Evanston space. Mm -hmm. uh, what time? Evanston, Illinois, of course. Uh, okay. Doors are at six, and the mm -hmm. show starts at seven. And um, yeah, I mean, if anybody wants uh, more information, uh, relaxyourears.com or Shannon. ShannonLeeHayden.com. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Joel Stysons and uh, Shannon Hayden for joining us on WCRD Chicago 88.3 FM today. And uh, good luck with the show. We look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.